What does it mean to be a genuine and authentic Christian? You must be what you pretend to be. Once upon a time, in the late 1980s, when people in my generation began to discover the computer, there was a term, WYSIWYG, a series of capital letters, meaning what you see is what you get. What you see on the screen is what will actually print out. People today are looking for genuine, for authentic people. They want to get what they see. What is authentic? What does it mean? Take a dictionary and you find all kinds of meanings. Real, genuine, worthy of trust, not fake, not phony, pure, conforming to the original, credible. People today, in particular young people, they can smell phoniness from a mile distance. If you're not real, forget it. Christians, unfortunately, do not always have a good reputation. For some, the word Christian is almost synonymous with hypocrisy. Christianity looks okay on the surface, but it is really not worth much. It's like watches. You know, you buy them on the beach in Africa, they are advertised as Rolex or some other expensive brand. But in reality, they come from China. <laughs> the name is Rolex, but they are fake. When we lived in Africa, I sometimes bought some Lacosta shirts for about two, three dollars each. Of course, I knew they were fake. Maybe some of you have traveled in Turkey and have seen signs saying, advertising boards saying, real fake watches. <laughs> we do not really like it when things are fake. When cheap things are given expensive brand names. We call it deception. It's even called crime. But it's worse when it concerns Christians. There is an author in the Netherlands. He writes quite well, sometimes quite funny. Martin Hart, he is called. In one of his stories, he tells about how he was invited as a boy to come along with his uncle. His uncle was a dealer in hand harmoniums. You know, these pump organs or whatever you call them here, but I think you know what I'm meaning. They were very popular with the Dutch Calvinists who liked to sing psalms at home. And so the uncle with his, his nephew, he goes to an old lady because this old lady has a harmonium for sale. And the uncle looks at it and he tries to convince the old lady that really that instrument is not worth not much. No, he says, well, you know, you should be glad that I take it off your hands, but okay, I'll give you $25. And so together, they load this instrument on the cart waiting outside. And then the uncle says to Martin, you know, I actually have a customer for this. It's really a nice instrument. We will get easily $200 for it. 
And then he adds, you know, this is how the Lord blesses those who serve him. <laughs> there used to be a saying in the Netherlands, after you have shaken hands with a church member, especially when he or she is of the very orthodox kind, then afterwards always count your fingers. <laughs> the Christian church does not always have a good name, at least not in Europe. And probably that is true for Australia as well. Ask people what they think of the church, and they will answer in terms like, Hypocrisy, power play, church is politics, greed because they always want your money, and at best the church is irrelevant. So what's new? Jesus was faced with the religious leaders of his days and we read in Matthew 23 how he called them hypocrites. We read there in verses 25 and 26, he says, you clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside these are full of greed and indulgence. And then he goes on and he even calls them whitewashed tombs, beautiful at the outside, but inside full of bones and everything unclean. We remember the story of Acts 5 very well. Ananias and Sapphira, they appeared to be very generous people. They decided to sell a piece of land and then give a large chunk of money to the church. But they were phony. They pretended to give all that they had because they wanted to look good. But they looked first after themselves. They gave because it enhanced their reputation. But their giving was not acceptable to God, as the story clearly indicates. We see many people in society, in the church, and we wonder, are they for real? When we see politicians go to church, we wonder, is this to win votes or is this genuine? And let's be honest, there's also much window dressing among Seventh-day Adventists. We know we are supposed to act in certain ways. So of course we do not eat pork and of course, we do not drink beer. And of course, we don't watch dirty movies or go to a casino. And of course, we have no sex outside of our marriage. But unfortunately, many act one way when church members are inside, but act quite differently when they feel they are safe and nobody is watching. Have you noticed that some people who seem to be the most pious, who act the most pious, are in fact the ones who prove to have behavioral problems? And often those who speak about the loose morals of others, they are the ones who themselves have been unfaithful or have all kinds of sexual problems. Of course, this dualism between saying and being is not something new. It's always been there, and it was always wrong. In the Old Testament already, we're told that the Lord sees what is really going on. He sees the inside. We read this story in First Samuel 16, where Samuel is told to go and anoint a new king. Samuel then is ready to anoint one particular person called Eliab, 
He looked very impressive. And Samuel thought, well, surely that is him. But God wanted David. And then it says, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And the New Testament also makes it clear that God judges not just the outside, but the inside. He looks what's there inside of us. He judges our motives. Christ says in his Sermon on the Mount, if you look at a woman in, in a sinful way, if you, in other words, undress her with your eyes, then you have already committed adultery. Today, the real is more important than ever before. People today want to see real persons, not what you do but who you are. They ask, who are you? What are you? When no one is looking. Your doctrine may be okay. You may know all the 28 fundamental beliefs, but the question is, who are you? Deep down. Are you what you say you are? If not, People will say, we won't listen to you. What do people expect to see when they look at us? They don't expect to see people who are perfect. They don't expect people to see people who have never failed in anything, who have a solution for everything. In fact, people who know everything, they detrust, distrust them. People don't like people who don't have any questions, who never have any doubt, who are always sure about everything. They expect people who are real. So if we want to have a hearing from our own, from our young people, if we want to do evangelism in whatever form, if we want to reach secular, non-church people, we must be real, we must be genuine, authentic. Otherwise, forget it. The question then is, of course, how do we become authentic? How do we become real? Let me mention tonight a few things. It's not a 10-step program. You know, it's not like a course how to learn to type or to learn French, but it has to do with who you are, not with what you know. If you want to be real, the first thing is that you are totally honest. That you're honest to yourself and honest to others. If I want to be real, I must be honest about what is happening in my life. Sometimes we are just an image. Sometimes we just do clever public relations for ourselves, but we hide who we are. We may be totally different from the image that we try to portray. We may not be the nice husband that we would like people to believe we are. We may not be the caring father or mother who people think we are. And we may not be as spiritual as our pious words in Sabbath school suggest. The reality about us may only be known to very few people close to us. You know, unfortunately, there are church members, men and women who go to church, but have no real spiritual life, have no real Christian experience. There are, unfortunately, Christian husbands who cheat on their wives. 
There are elders in churches who never pay tithe. There are brothers and sisters who have never conquered some wrong habits. If you want to be real, be honest. Do you think it doesn't shine through somehow? Sooner or later the truth will come out. Somehow people smell that things don't add up. Begin with total honesty. If you do not like what you see when you look at your, yourself, then work for change. Ask God to renew you. That will earn you respect. Living a lie brings only dissolution. If you want to be real, if you want to be genuine, that's my second point, admit doubts. Admit that you make mistakes. Admitting your doubts does not make you weaker. We all have doubts. That is, all of us who do any thinking at all. But the question is, what do we do with our doubts? Do we cultivate them? Do we suggest to ourselves and to others that our doubts are simply a result of our great intelligence? Or do we struggle for answers, dealing with our questions one by one, even if it takes a long time? If you want to be genuine, you must be willing to be vulnerable. When you tell others about yourself, then of course you, you tell them what went well. But you should also tell them where you failed, the problems, the issues that you faced. It took me a long time to learn that. But I found that people listen. They listen when they realize, okay, this guy, he knows what he's talking about. He is real. He has had these same, same problems. One of the tragedies of, for many who work in the church, they see that their children have not followed in the same path. I used to be quiet about that. For a long time I remained fuzzy when people asked me, where are your children? Are they in the church? Nowadays, I speak openly about it when people ask me about it. And I find that most people, at least that's what I think, do not judge me. But most people empathize with me, sympathize with me, and do understand that I can truly understand them when they talk about their issues, their problems. If you want to be genuine, then listen to the story of others and tell your own story as it is. Listening to the stories of others does not come easy to me especially when people tend to tell the same story over and over again, you switch off. But yet, people have their stories and they need to be listened to, and you must realize that people also want to know your story, where you come from, who you are, what makes you tick. If you want to be authentic, this authenticity must shine through in how you live in your daily life. When you say you believe in God, then do your everyday choices reflect that belief. Very few people in your community ask you, are you totally correct in your doctrine? But most people around you who see you, they ask, are you a nice person? Can we see that you care? Can we see that you're honest? If you want to be genuine, then the question is, 
do you model acceptance and forgiveness, both in forgiving others and in graciously accepting forgiveness from others? I have gradually learned that I do not need to pretend that everything is okay in my life. I can tell others about my doubt. Of course, I should do so in responsible ways and not always everywhere to anyone, but when it's relevant and when it's needed. So that others feel, yes, this fellow, he is of flesh and blood like me. He understands me. I've learned also to be honest about the things I do not do or the things I no longer believe in. Not because I want to shock people, but I want to be honest. I want to be honest about the things that I'm struggling with. And I find that people, at least most people, do not reject me because of that. Because they realize, okay, if he has his own problems, he will understand me and not judge me when I speak about mine. I must ask myself constantly, have the things that I preach about become reality in my life, at least to some extent? And do my beliefs help me to make different choices, to become a different, a new person? When I say I believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ, has that changed my priorities in life? When I say that I, I keep the Sabbath, does that really give me a weekly pause when I focus on things beyond my work? When I say that I believe our message on life after death resurrection, does that really give me the inner peace, the sense of destiny that I should have? Do people see that I live a life that matters? Some years ago, I was confronted with the death of a good friend, not a member of our church. The family put in the announcement a very significant line, his story was not finished. Then they asked me to lead the funeral service and they said, well, you know, we're not asking you as a pastor, but as a friend. And I took my cue from, for my sermon from that line that was put on the announcement on this card, his story was not finished. You know, when people say that, that shows that a person has really lived. So many live a life that gives a story that tells nothing and is not worth listening to. So I hope that when my time comes, that people will say his story was not finished. There was still so much more promise of so much more to come. when people look at me. And I hope you will ask that same kind of question yourself when people look at me. Do they see a faithful steward? Do they see a real disciple? Do they see somebody who is really a Christian in his relationships? And do they see someone who is transparent and can be trusted? Not occasionally, but 24-7. It's not easy. Becoming authentic, becoming genuine, becoming real is a work in progress. In essence, it is becoming gradually, constantly more like Jesus Christ. To be truly authentic is to be like Christ. And that is why the scripture reading was from Philippians 2. There where it says, 
that Christ became human, became totally vulnerable. He took flesh like ours, went as far as dying for us. Talk about vulnerability. You do not become a real, an authentic person overnight. It takes a lifelong commitment. It takes discipline. It's a matter of growth. And it's a matter of prayer. What applies to us as individuals also applies to us as church community. How does the church become an ever more authentic community that can attract people? We do not become authentic. We do not become an open, caring church by just saying it or writing it on our church bulletin. It takes effort from all of us. But if we are not authentic individually and as a community, we can shake it. People will ignore us or worse. May God help us to be authentic individually and as a community. Amen. Let's stand for prayer. Our loving Father, tonight as we are standing here, we ask for forgiveness. For all those moments that we have not been real, that we have been fake, that we have pretended to be someone who we not really are. Help us, Father, in our struggle, in our lifelong progress towards becoming a real genuine disciple of you. Renew in us, Father, what needs to be renewed so that, so that we be more like your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Help us, Father, to be authentic, we ask you in your Son's name. Amen.